Okay guys, so in this video we're gonna continue our daily git commands series, so let's get into it. So here in part 3 we're gonna have a look at git stash, rebase and reflog. Now these are commands that you may not use necessarily every single day, but there are definitely commands that are very useful to know about. Git stash might be a daily thing, depending on how you work. So let's say for the sake of argument that here I am on my very nice test branch here, and I'm just working away, adding some numbers here, and a 4, and a 5, and a 6, and a 9, because I'm a rebel, and something like that. Anywho. And all of a sudden my coworker comes in and says, hey Frederick, I need you to look at this thing with me. Uh, can you just, uh, you know, check out this other file thing? And maybe now I have an instance, maybe I'm working here and maybe I have broken my code or there's a compilation error or something like that. I'm kind of in the middle of something. I haven't saved anything. And my, I go, okay, uh, just let me fix this. So I go and give, do git status. And I can see here that I have some modified files and maybe my code is now broken just because of this changes I was working on. So now I can use git stash. And what git stash does is that it takes my unstaged changes, the stuff that I'm working on that hasn't been committed yet, and just puts that in a temporary storage bucket. So I can go and do git stash list and here is a stash, like a list of all the things that I have stashed. I can stash many times, I can stash many, many changes if I wanted to, but usually I don't have to. And now I'm back into a consistent state, like the last time I checked this branch out. So I can now help my coworker, we can talk and like, don't have to worry about any problems and so forth. And then I can do git stash pop to just pop out my changes and have them back there again. Cool. That's one way to do it. That's probably the way you want to do it. Be a little bit careful with stashes though, because you can delete stashes as well. But if you do that, you haven't committed that code and then that is, uh, well, it's not gone, but it's uh, it's something that you can, you can get it back through ref logs and so forth, but well, that's, that's kind of out of scope for this video. Anywho, let's say for the sake of argument that I want to do something like this. I want to do git add everything commit AMVP. That's a classic one. I've done this a hundred times or more. And now I have a commit that represents like just VP working problem progress. I can also just do this. I can do git checkout and then the commit ID. And now I can check out a uh, well a detached head state where basically I'm just revo I'm going back in time on my git history and just checking out the code this in the state it was before I had that working progress commit. So this is another way that you can do the same thing as stashing. You can just commit something in a temporary commit or something like that and then go back in time to a commit that you want. I mean shit. I can do something like this. I can do git log, scroll the, all the way back to the absolute first thing I ever did. And then I can do check out first commit ever. And then you'll see here that, hey, we don't actually have anything here. So that works as well. So now with all of this done, don't show me that again. We've kind of touched on stashing. Okay, let's say for the sake of argument that I add an 11 and a 12 and a 15 or a 6, no, a 16 and then a 17 because everything is in is anarchy. Enumerations are supposed to be, be weird. Anywho, let's say that I've just done that and I say something like git log, no, git diff, and I'll see here that, oh, I've added some, some new lines here. Let's do a git commit here and let's do an AMVP and say added numbers. And that's my entire feature now and of course the tests are going to run. Git log. So now I have my feature done because I've added all these random nice numbers to my file and there is one thing though about this that some people might take issue with and that is that. That little guy right there. Some people really don't like having what we call these intermediate or like junk commits where you might just create like these 
small changes that don't really add so much value. Some people argue that you should, you should uh, th th there's two schools here. Some people argue that you should just merge commits as are, regardless of if they're like a small fix or a, some something like that. And some people want to have what we call atomic commits. And an atomic commit is just a commit that is scoped to a feature or to a functioning state of the code. So let's for, say for the sake of argument that I had some compilation errors or something like that, like, like that, like the code didn't compile or that the test didn't run or something like that in this commit here. Now if somebody else comes and checks out this commit, they will have broken code. And some people really hate that. They don't, they really only want to have commits that are clean, working and well structured. So if we want to abide by that, we can use something like rebase. And rebase, what it allows me to do basically is to rewrite the history or the git history to to what well not to exactly whatever to but I can rewrite the history of the of the tree so let's say for the sake of argument that we want to abide by this idea of committing atomic code or making atomic commits so I can say git rebase and then I can give it the i flag for interactive, which just gives me a little prompt. And I want to rebase the changes that I just made. This is basically, you can think of rebase as just, you know, I'm, it's, I, mean, I can rebase this. I can just rebase instead of merging. I can merge or I can rebase. Well, I can do both technically, but anywho. So now I want to rebase my changes over to master or base my rebase on master. And here you can now see that I actually have my commits. This is just my prompt. This is the interactive flag right there. And I have a sheet, sheet here of things that I can do if I wanted to. So what I want to do is that I want to remove this and I want to change this to an S. And the S means squash. So what I want to do is that I want to squash this commit into that commit. Make sense? No. So now, oh, there was an issue. I always have this weird thing. I don't know why. Let's let's change that to a squash. There we are. So now it gives me this message. This is a combination of two commits. This is the first commit message, VP. This is the second message. I don't really want to deal with all of this, so I'm just going to remove all that. And I'm just going to keep that and call that my very nice commit message. Success, git log. And now you will see that I have actually rewritten. So I had two commits, but I have squashed them into the same commit. So this is now an atomic commit. And I can say something like git diff. And now you will see that I actually have all of those changes, all, uh, all of them in the same, um, in the same uh, uh, commit. And rebase can, this is something that is uh, this is just one of the things that rebase can do but it's a very useful thing to know know about because depending on where you work some people as i said they say that you should always merge because merging if you do if you rebase incorrectly you can actually do a lot of damage but it's also a way for you to keep things very clean and merge is always the safe option but the problem is that if you have people who make a lot of small commits you might have a very dirty history, a git history where it's hard to figure out what's actually going on. So now finally I'm going to show you something that is absolutely horrible and if it happens it's uh, it used to be something that was so bad for me that it, 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 I'm not going to say I cried but it was fucking borderline. So I can say something like git log and then, then I can say, you know, I, let's say that I did a bunch of work here. I didn't really want this story here. This thing here, it's, uh, it's not what I want. And then I kind of scroll here and all of a sudden somebody pats me on the shoulder and says, Hey, Frederick, can you check this thing out? And I lose my, my cool. And I, and I copy paste this little ID here. And then I see, say, git reset hard. And what just happened now is that I lost all of my history, all of the work that I just did. It's all gone. And 
maybe I just realized that, oh shit, all that work that I did, like with the squashing and all that stuff, I actually needed that, but now it's gone because I did a hard reset and that means that all of the files are gone and like, all, I mean, shit, everything's gone. I mean, I can check out master again, I could do that, and then I will get back all the stuff that has happened up until the stuff that I committed in the squash, but everything else is gone. But it's actually not. This is where it gets really useful with this command, git reflog. So git reflog is a reference log, or a, it's just a history of all the write commands that I have made to, to my repository. So you can see here that, if we follow through here, you'll see here that, okay, so I had a reset, that's the most recent thing I did, and then I had a rebase, 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 commit, add a numbers, a checkout, and then there's a checkout, and I can just continue downwards here, and you will see like, this is just a history of all the commands that I'm running, more or less. Well, not all, all of them, but all the things, like moving from branches, and writing to branches, and like all of this stuff, right? So this is an extremely useful tool to ha have. And on the side here, you will see that there's a SHA. And thanks to reflog, I can actually go and save my entire situation now. I can actually get back everything because I see here that I made a commit called added numbers, and then I did a rebase, and then this finished the rebase. So if I do that, like so. Now let's actually do a hard one. Git log, and ta-da, I now actually have back all of my work. I, I, I'm, I actually, I'm back to the state I was before I actually did that mistake, and, I, and, that, and that I made the mistake of doing a hard reset and destroying my entire history. So now I have my work uh, just, uh, just exactly as it was before I made my mistake. So reflog, I mean, this is just, just kind of scratching the surface of what reflog can do, but I highly recommend you have a closer look at some of the stuff that you can do with it, because whenever you delete something or you think that something is gone, usually it's not. As long as it's in, if you, if you have a history, or history in the reflog, you can pretty much always get back to a state where you didn't do something destructive such as rebasing incorrectly or merging incorrectly or resetting or you're doing a hard reset or something like that. So yeah, I think that that covers most of the commands that I use on a fairly daily basis. Hopefully, I mean, maybe there's something else, but if there is, we'll touch on that in another set of videos. Have a great day.